the oil shell resources worldwide are enormous. If we just look at the Green River formation right here in the United States, and you can see a little bit more of this right here, that there are three trillion barrels of oil located just in that region. And about half of those are deemed recoverable. So 1.5 trillion barrels of oil. So how does that compare to some of the other reserves? So you look at Alaska North Slope, Alberta oil sands, which are enormous as well. You have Wyoming coal, and then you look at some of the Utah and Colorado oil shell. Now, some of the problems with this is the oil shell typically is when it's refined through this pyrolysis, it has high sulfur content. So it's not a direct replacement for crude oil. The other thing is that it typically costs about um, you know, $60 per barrel if it's fully commercialized in order to be able to extract this. And so we're gonna be talking about optimization today, how to optimize the extraction of this oil shell to turn it into shale oil. So when you refine it, then you take what's located here and you convert that into something called shale oil. So you just reverse the two words, but it basically means that this is uh, refined or extracted versus this is the oil that's contained in the kerogen. Um, so the, the other thing with this uh, that's a potential issue, even though it might be 60 to $80 per barrel to be able to extract this huge resource, the other thing is that many estimate the amount of greenhouse gases that are emitted during this to be three times higher than other oil extraction methods. So you've also got an environmental cost here in terms of total CO2 released into the atmosphere during this refinement process. So if we have to use this because of oil reserves or because it becomes economically feasible, we want to be able to do this in the most responsible way and let's use optimization to try to minimize the amount of excess CO2 produced or the amount of energy wasted during this refinement process. So we're going to create just a simplified model of this and do some optimization of this oil shell process. And we're going to start with the kerogen, that's the oil shell, okay, that's extracted through some type of mining or some type of extraction. Okay, it's decomposed into pyrolytic bitumen, oil and gas, and residual carbon. Okay, so we have the different, um, the different species here, okay, where we start here with the oil shell, the kerogen, and then we have our different products that are here. So A2 through A4 are gonna be the products of this. Okay, so we have reaction rates. So this is a, a basic Arrhenius expression for the reaction rate where we're dependent on the temperature and then we have an activation energy and a pre-exponential factor as well. And then we're trying to maximize, okay? We're gonna try to maximize this X2 at the final time. So that's our desired uh, product and uh, we have this reaction mechanism here that's described by these ordinary differential equations. And then we have our reaction rates, and we also have uh, the time. We're going to ma uh, maximize this within this batch time. Now, the temperature, we say it can go between 698 and 748. All right, and we're going to start with just this first uh, kerogen and it's de gonna decompose into these A2 through A4 values. So let's go ahead and just create the model for this, and then we're gonna perform an optimization to try to maximize the desirable product and minimize the undesirable uh, products. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start this. We're gonna, uh, from Gecko, we'll import Gecko, and this is gonna be our uh, modeling language that you'll use to pose the differential equations and also the algebraic equations. We'll get NumPy and matplotlib as well. Okay, you know, we'll say remote equals false. So we're gonna solve locally with Gecko 
and then come up with 101 time points for this batch of kerogen that we're going to process. Okay, and there's our time. And then we'll also have a final time as well because we just want to maximize the final time, uh, the x2 at the final time. And we're also going to adjust the batch length. Okay, so we. Uh, there's our final time. We're going to allow it to adjust how long we use for this batch, okay? Because we want to try to maximize X2. We don't necessarily know how long we need to be able to process it, or we don't even know the temperatures that we need to process this. Okay, so here we have uh, values uh, 425, okay, is going to be our initial guess. And we're just going to uh, go with degrees Celsius for this instead of degrees uh or instead of Kelvin. All right, I'm gonna make this range, uh, you know, this uh, 50 degree range for between the lower and upper bound. Okay, so we're trying to maximize the pyrolytic bitumen. Okay, and then we have X3. This is gonna be one that we're gonna to try to, uh, here's the oil and gas, and we could try to maximize that as well if we wanted oil and gas from this. And X4 is going to be the carbon residue okay here's our final value and we'll just create p as a numpy zeros array and then the very last value we're going to set that equal to one and we'll have a final parameter and that's going to be zero everywhere except one at the very last point we'll have a gas constant all right and then we're going to see you know, this is in Kelvin, so our temperature there is in Celsius. We'll have to convert that to Kelvin in our equations. We'll have the frequency factors for these. Okay, so these are going to be this pre-exponential factor, this uh, Ki0. We could just call them A in this case. And we're just going to put in those... Um, those values, okay, for our kinetic rate constants. Now, a lot of times these kinetic rate constants are determined from uh, simulation or by fitting the data. So you, you basically send it through this process, you measure the final concentrations, and you fit these activation energies and frequency factors uh, for these rate mechanisms. Okay, so we have the activation energies. These are the EI values okay I just labeled them as B here and then we're gonna have some intermediate values as well this is gonna be K1 and we use these in gecko to be able to efficiently solve some of these expressions that we don't necessarily need to have the solution for but their intermediates are gonna go into other equations so they're pre-calculated the first and second derivatives are computed with automatic differentiation and then substitute it into the other equations so that these sparse nonlinear solvers can efficiently solve this problem. Okay, we have the exponential of these quantities. Those are extremely nonlinear. And so we need to use this nonlinear programming solver. Sometimes we have to use initialization methods as well in order to be able to solve these problems. Let's go ahead and just finish with all of these intermediates here. Okay, and if there were many of them, like 100 reactions, we could have done this as an array, but I just typed all of these out just for the sake of simplicity here. Okay, we're going to divide by time final just to be able to adjust the final time. Okay, so there's our first equation. And you can see the second one, x2. So I'm just plugging in the ordinary differential equations here. All right, I'll have the third equation. This is going to be for the oil and gas concentration. And x4 as well it's just k5 times x1 times x2 now here's my objective function so this is what i'm going to try to maximize and we'll see if we can also maximize the oil and gas if we wanted to maximize that instead 
all right? But in this case, it's going to be the pyrolytic bitumen that we're going to try to maximize. Now, here's our solver. We're going to use the IPOP solver. We'll solve it in a dynamic optimization mode, I mode 6, and then solve it. And then just for plotting, we'll get our final value, and multiply it by m dot time, which was just 0 to 1. So TF is going to be that scalar for the final time. Now, here is our plotting. And we're going to create a plot just to be able to visualize the solution. I'm going to bring this up in IDLE. And then we'll solve it and Okay, so it's almost done with uh, some of these subplots here. Okay, and once we're finished with that, we're going to just bring up a new command prompt and then we'll run this. Okay, I'll go ahead and minimize this so we can see still the uh, finishing we're going to do the oil shell we'll do python and then this one is going to be code one i have it called okay i'll just start this solving just so we can see it as it's as it's running okay and here's our subplot uh, with some of the values. Now this is just finishing the typing out the solution. You can see the third subplot here. We're going to plot the temperature profile. And in the second subplot you can see the oil and gas and the carbon residue. And the X2 is the thing that we're trying to maximize there. That's the fraction. And you can see that we got you know about point uh, what was it, about point 3.2 oil and gas and carbon residue was down here at about 0.19 or so and then the pyrolytic bitumen here is about 0.35 okay and you could see that in the objective function right down here uh, 0.35 now it converts maximization into minimization by multiplied by negative one so whenever you see the negative there, just uh, for maximization, just convert that back to the maximization by multiplying that objective by negative one. So we achieve 0.35. And you can see from this right here that, you know, as it went on, we initially had a ramp in the temperature up to 465. And then down this, you can see this bowl shape right here. And then up to the maximum level, and then back down to the lower level, you know, 425 or so. Okay, now we adjusted not only the temperature profile, but also the final time. So this took, uh, you know, in this case, 7.7 .7 in terms of the time units to process this batch. But let's go in here and just do a couple scenarios about, you know, what if, we wanted to do something just a little bit different with this. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just, okay, I'm gonna bring this back up right here. And let's go ahead and just, un you know, we could unconstrain the temperature if we want to go a little bit higher. Okay, maybe up to 500. And let's just go ahead and save that onto the into the oil shell and we'll just shape, save it here as code one okay let's run this again so we got 0.35 for the first one and you can see it got just a little bit more okay and you can see that it went up to the 500 uh, temperature there in terms of the degree celsius but we got a little bit more product out of it but let's say we want to change this now 
um, instead of maximizing just the pyrolytic uh, bitumen, we wanted to maximize both that and also the oil and gas. Okay, I'm going to put that as three. Okay, and here you can see the oil and gas made it up to about uh, 0.338. So let's run this again. And just see how far it gets up when we change what we're trying to maximize. You can see it's a different temperature profile here. You know, almost all of the pyrolytic bitumen is gone now. Um, and you can see we've maximized the oil and gas and you have the carbon residue. So you can see it made it up to 0.8 right here in terms of the oil and gas. Okay, uh, so a lot more depending on what we're trying to maximize. And let's say we wanted to just do the carbon residual or residue. Okay, so it would be a lower temperature and we'd be trying to maximize this carbon residue. Okay, I don't know why we'd want to do that, but you can maximize uh, those different quantities. Let's say we want to maximize X2, okay, plus X3. Maybe we put a value on those. So maybe we can sell this for, you know, $60 a barrel, and we might be able to sell this for 40 Okay, so we can also do this where we try to maximize the final concentrations of those multiplied by the an economic factor. Okay, and then it finds the right balance. It found that it was able to you know sell more oil and gas. It pyrolytic bitumen was less. Okay, if we put this as more, then we're gonna see something like we had in the first solution. Okay, actually just a little bit lower because it could get the oil and gas up higher. Okay, so interesting things that we can do with this. Um, some of the things that we, we could extend this with is you know, be able to calculate the CO2 emissions and try to minimize those. Or maybe some kind of a combined objective function where there's a carbon tax and there's a price on CO2 emissions, but also a profit on being able to create these products. So there's a lot of different things we can do in this environment. Once we have this model, uh, we can use different objective functions to be able to come up with the best temperature profiles and the processing time for this batch. Okay, let me show you the website for this uh, with all the source code. Here is the URL for that. I'll put that in the video description. And there you can see the mechanism, one of the results, and some of this source as well. And a little bit more information about the Gecko optimization suite. And here's the documentation and how to pip install just to get started with Gecko. There's uh, Gecko publications and references here. Uh, if you'd like to cite Gecko in your article if you're using it, and then also some example problems. So here are 18 example problems with Gecko that cover everything from solving linear equations and nonlinear equations to model predictive control, moving horizon estimation, and other types of optimization and simulations. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm glad to get any feedback on the content. And let me know what you think about some of these large energy reserves and the best ways to be able to extract or utilize these, or maybe we need to go to nuclear or others that are not emitting CO2.